What is up guys? Welcome to the Computer Information Highway for your Java programming tutorial number 31. And getting started with this, uh, I think the first thing I should do is go ahead and change a couple of mistakes I had from before. Uh, this needed to be key because this is the key as a character array. And this is supposed to be initial vector because this is the initial vector in the form of a character array. Um, and <clears throat> That's one of the issues. Another one of the issues is that, um, actually, I guess this is where we just left off. Um, I'm going to, so we want to set our initial vector. We want to change our initial vector uh, so that it's ready for the next time we have to put it into our, uh, put it into our function. So this is going to be recursively designed. Uh, so as long as there's still characters left in the text, it's going to continue to encrypt further uh, in this from based off of our size. Uh, and showing that real quick again, um, in here, we're taking our shifted text, which we ended up getting to be K and N, and we're using it as our next vector uh, to be shifted with our next subset of our plain text. So if we had like E and E and F after this, uh, K and N is going to be our initial vector to our E and F, and then our key is still going to be the same. Um, so the the idea is recursively designed. So we're going to go ahead and uh, work on that. So in order to change our initial vector, we need to make sure that we set it back to nothing, because right now we have some stuff in it, uh, but we've already loaded it into our initial vector here. So it doesn't really matter if we're resetting our value of our initial vector. And I'd like to keep using the variable anyways, so I don't keep allocating more space. Um, whatever. <clears throat> so setting our initial vector. Our initial vector is going to contain characters uh, located from the shift that C ints is going to be performed onto our key. So since we're shifting uh, the integers that we have here, so this is going to be an array of integers now, we want to shift it by the values of the key that we get. Um, so we can set initial vector of, or initial vector plus equals. So we can just shift each character that happens and put it in. Um, so we can do C ints. Go ahead and get rid of that. We can do C ints of X. Uh, plus, hold on. Let me move this back over so that I have this available to see. Okay, so we're going to have C ints of X. And we're also going to have... Uh, so we need to have the key that we're shifting it with. So we need to do uh, character dot. If I can spell character dot get numeric value of n. What we needed was the p key. So we'll do our p key of x. And then since this is going to be the numeric value we need to make sure we need to, we shift this down to 10 down by 10 sorry and then i'm going to encapsulate all all of this because we also want to make sure that this does not extend past our percent 26 or our 26 characters right and then if i add 10 afterwards that's going to set it back up into the position of where the characters are actually located so in when we do our shift right here, we go ahead. We go ahead and we already shift them down by ten. So there's no need to reshift our C ints down by ten. That's already been shifted. And since this is also getting shifted down by ten, we're basically going to have two numbers uh, between one and twenty-six that are added together. Uh, and it that's what uh, so that's what this part does. It just takes the two numbers, adds them together, and uh, gets it gets the value of from 0 to 26 or 0 to 25 and then we're adding 10 so that it starts off at the actual character value located in the uh, located in the character list 
Another problem that we're going to have is we need to take our initial vector and we have it as a string. Uh, so we have it as a string right now, but everything is calculated as a character. And we have a character dot get numeric, but the question is do we have a character that takes the digit and returns uh, the character that's actually located there? And the answer is yes. Uh, so if we close this off again, I'm going to do character dot four digit and basically what four digit does is hold on okay so now we have our uh, so basically what I did is we're adding these digits together uh, we're subtracting by 10 and we're filling it or we're getting the character at the location of the number that we have that we put in here and shift it up by 10. This actually takes two uh, two arguments. The first one is going to be the number of course that we're working with. The second one is going to be uh, the span of our list and it's basically so basically the second one is going to be our radix, which is the, it's the like size of our list that we're working from. And since we're using the same one that we used uh, from before, uh, which was just zero through zero through nine and a through Z, that just goes from zero through 36. So if we do character dot uh, max, max radix, this is just going to be our 0 to 35 character set that we were using before. So that's just our second argument. So this will now shift the character by C instant get numeric uh, value of our key. It's going to put it back into the position of the actual character locations. And then it's going to put it into a character format, which we're going to add on to our initial vector. So you can see how these like these uh, these methods that we're using from, say, our character class uh, can be very helpful. It's good to actually go through and like look them up and see what else you can do with them because there's a lot of very useful functions out there, especially in uh, things like the string class as well um, <clears throat> because it just gives you so much versatility while you're programming uh, so you don't have to make a bunch of other functions to do some quick little shortcuts that you would normally have to do. Um, the next thing that we have to do is we need to reset the value of text and we want text to be uh, we want text to be only part of what it was before so since we had if we had like our entire text uh, like if we had our entire text hello uh, and it takes in let's just say our key was like hi and we decided that our uh, size was going to be the size of our key. Um, then, since it's only two characters long, the block size is only going to be too long, which means it's going to take H and E and turn that into our next initial vector. But we still have L, L, and O to go. <clears throat> so we need to make sure that we get the rest of it. So we're trying to take a substring of text and it's going to be equal to the block size. So we're going to go ahead and put text equal to nothing again because we're going to repopulate the value of text. And then we're going to do for, uh, let's do char c and we want this to be our p key, right? No, our p text because this is going to be a substring of our text. We want to set uh, text plus equal c. So in order to make our change to text uh, to where it updates for the next time we're going to move into it, um, we want to make sure we take or we want to take a substring of it, which is going to be uh, everything up to the uh, B size, which is the size of our block. So if the size is going to be greater than our block size is greater than or equal to our block size. Uh, so let's say it's this situation again up here we have hi and hello um, 
since the text that we have is greater than our block size, it's only going to take the L, the L, and the O, and um, or it's going to turn it into a, a string that just contains the L, the L, and the O, and that's what it's going to pass into our text for the next iteration of our uh, recursive uh, encryption. So we can do that pretty simply. Uh, if we set text equal to, and we can do something called a quick if. Uh, I don't know if I have gone through it before, but I'll just run through it again because it's not really that difficult to understand. Um, we can do a quick if statement where we can set the value of something equal to a uh, like an if else statement, uh, statement or an if else conditional, but you can do it in a single line of text so that you don't take up a lot of space and it does some pretty quick processing. It doesn't, it's not any less efficient or any more efficient. It just helps with, I guess, readability. <clears throat> So we can do, so we want to check the size of text dot, I think it's text dot length. We want to sec, uh, check if text dot length is greater than or equal to B size. And we can do that with a question mark and that'll just question these, this conditional right here. It's asking, is this true? If it is, which is what's going to come afterwards. If it is, um, so we want to set uh, text dot substring. We want to do text.substring of b size, and this will set uh, text. So substring is basically a, it's what it sounds like, it's like a section of the string that we have, and it's based off of a start position. And this start position, since our size of, since we're expecting our length to be greater than the b size, um, we want it to start at b size. So it will only take the l, the l, and the o after it has already processed these two. Um, because the B size in this case is going to be two, uh, which would be the first two characters. So in the starting case is would be at two, which is zero, one, two, which is the L, the L, and the O. Um, and if not, uh, if for some reason the text is less than the B size, well, we already took care of that case in here. Uh, so we have if X is greater than or equal to the P text dot length, uh, we ended up just using a dummy character for it. Um, so we can just say that it was already taken care of. So we want to say that the string is empty. And this string being empty will mean that whenever we put in our, uh, our text to the next one, if our string is empty, there won't be anything to compute. There won't be any need to run uh, any of this. Um, <clears throat> so you'll see. And then one of the last things that we need to do is we need to set up our base case for our encryption function. Um, first of all, we're going to be working with a uh, string because we're going to be outputting the string that we have after we've encrypted everything. So we're going to change this from void to string. And then we want to say if the length of our text uh, is equal to zero. So basically there's nothing left in our text. There's nothing else to do. Then we can just return return initial vector, right? Because initial vector is going to be our completely shifted text. Initial vector is going to turn into our encryption. So we're going to turn our initial vector we're going to be turning, re returning our initial vector plus a new call of encrypt. So what this is going to do is it's going to, uh, it's going to, it's going to call this function right here again, and we're going to do it with our updated values. Uh, our first one is going to be text, our second one is going to be our key, and our third one is going to be our initial vector. That just about takes care of this function. Um, we're going to test it real quick in order to uh, follow the same schematics as what we came up with. Uh, we're going to use our initial text as being CD and we're going to be using our initial vector as BC as well as our key being HI. So we can do uh, CD HI and BC. And we want to print this out to the screen, so I'm just going to print it out to the screen. 
since it's returning a string, uh, we can just make this function call inside of our print statement. Um, so let's save it and let's try to run it. All right. Oh, this was just some other stuff from here. All right. So if you can see, guys, I know it's kind of hard to see, uh, but we were supposed to get KN after putting these two pieces of information through. Uh, we'll just call this our magic machine. Uh, we put it through our magic machine right here. It encrypts the function and it puts it out KN exactly how we expected it to. Um, now, this is going to work. Right now, it's only going to work if the size of the uh, key and the size of the text is the same. Um, but in the next video, I will make sure I fix that up for you guys so that you can make it work with any type of uh, key or uh, plain text length to accompany a block size or our initial vector or our block size or our key. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.